was a moot. All right. So I'll be talking a little bit about uh, uh, Tegra and uh, my, uh, my and some other people's efforts to try to understand uh, its internal workings, or rather the workings of the uh, user, user space uh, drivers. So first I'll tell a little bit about who I am. Um, I have about uh, 20 years of graphics programming experience. Ten of those years have been professionally. Uh, I used to work at ARM and Phalanx for, uh, at the Mali driver team, making the, the drivers that uh, Luke Care has been so friendly to try to pick apart. Uh, and while doing that, I was involved in the development of the OpenGL ES 1.1 and 2.0 standards. Um, I'm a, a reasonably active open source contributor. Uh, my biggest portion of that is uh, for Git, uh, but also you know, the casual patches to some other projects. Uh, and I'm uh, an active demo senior, if anyone knows what that is. Unfortunately, no, because uh, they're, they don't. There's a lot of demos for ARM. Oh, I have released uh, lots of demos for ARM. I used to work at ARM. <laughs> yeah. Ah, sorry. All right, so um, this is titled Great, so I'll tell you a little bit about what Great is. It's uh, an anagram for Tegra, as you probably didn't see, but... Uh, uh, it's, uh, so it's an effort to re reverse engineer the GPU and uh, eventually to create an open source driver from it. Uh, it's probably the furthest behind of all of these ARM SOC uh, projects uh, due to not very much time av available for doing this. But uh, yeah, we'll still give it a go. Uh, yeah, and the usual everything here is based on reverse engineering, so you know, don't invest all your life savings into something based on something I'm telling you here. It's, uh, most information might indeed be incorrect. Uh, so I'll tell a little bit about what has happened so far. Um, yeah, so in the summer of 2012, I, uh, I heard about the, the <coughs> Lima project and I joined their IR RC channel, but it was so boring because I'm NDA tainted due to my ARM work, so I can't touch their stuff. So instead, I decided, or rather, Luke convinced me to start looking into the Tegra. Uh, and then, so I just quietly hacked away, and uh, around Fostem last year, I had com implemented command, list, uh, command stream. Uh, capturing and uh, parsing, so I can pick it apart and see a bit of what's happening. Uh, I did uh, some Envy Tools uh, shader database or register database for uh, the uh, uh, some of the. I say this has most of the OpenGL is non-shader state, but it's it's a bit difficult because a lot of this gets in, compiled into the shaders as well. Um, I had a very rough fragment shader disassembler, uh, yeah, and I had uh, uh, reverse engineered the proprietary compiler uh, shared object interface so I could compile shaders from my own programs without using their driver. Uh, and then I got bored, bored with it <laughs> and uh, kind of uh, stopped working for a while. So uh, at that point, or a few months, I think a month later or so, uh, I was told by Luke that I had to get my ass onto IRC because something, someone, someone was doing something, and uh, that was Thierry. Uh, and it turned out he had uh, not at all been uh, idling while I was procrastinating. Uh, so he uh, he had already, I think, been working on the on the. Linux uh, kernel drivers. Uh, he started uh, hacking together some uh, libdrm interface for that. Uh, he replayed command streams, and it, he started on a DDX driver, and uh, he even did some work uh, on Gallium, so for Mesa. 
uh, and then yeah, Jerry got hired by Nvidia. So uh, I'm slowly trying to kind of follow up on on what he's doing, uh, but bear in mind that my biggest interest here is the reverse engineering part and not so much the driver development part because I've already itched that scratch at ARM. So, yeah. But I will, I will, you know, give it a go. But yeah, awesome work, Terry. And uh, more awesome work in the future. He's the one in the green t-shirt back, back there. Yeah, and also I should mention that uh, Rob Clark, who's, who's doing the uh, Fredrina project, he has also had some had a little bit of look at some of the some of the stuff, so helped out a little bit as well. So yeah, the the current status as of now. So this was you know a year ago. Um, so yeah, I've basically been focusing on the Tegra two, uh, I Tegra three and four. I will mention a little bit about, but it's uh, yeah. So we have a command stream dumping. Uh, we can replay that and do some basic render rendering. We've been tampering with a lot of state to kind of confirm suspicions, stuff like that. So we can we can do you know a little bit of uh, stuff there. Uh, yeah, there's some upstream Linux DRM driver, uh, and now it's even as of I think. Uh, Two three weeks ago or so, it uh, has support for the for the three D core. Uh, downstream uh, libdrm support. Uh, the blue things there are links in the <laughs> in the slides, but uh, I'll put them up online if someone wants to have the uh, links. Uh, yeah, now we have a very very unfinished Mesa Gallium driver and can only do GL clear and read pixels, but yeah, it's at least some basic stuff working. Uh, so it d deals with you know tiling and these kinds of things. So yeah. so Tegra three seems to just work. It uh, I don't I don't really know this, but it's I, I haven't seen any real differences in the in the command stream. So it looks like it's just the same 3D core. Uh, Tegra four has some more registers uh, that we've found. Um, some of the, I, I don't think it's strictly compatible, as in I think the first command streams we did didn't replay there, but there has been replayed uh, some command streams on Tegra 4 hardware. So it seems to be roughly, roughly compatible. K1, uh, you heard about those of you who were in the, la uh, in the previous talk, probably heard a little bit about that. It's Kepler-based. It, it only has the GPU or the 3D core from the Kepler. Uh, rest of the GeForce inf infrastructure seems to be lacking there. So I have not done any work because yeah, I'm focusing on the 3D core and the, on the Tegra. So that's the one that's being replaced. And yeah, this is something Nouveau will have to deal with, I guess. What? <laughs> Let's discuss that later, okay? I I I need to to work with you guys on some things. Uh, yeah. So I won't talk more anything more about the the K1 uh, in this talk. This is just a short summary. All right. So it says demo, but apparently we can't. Yeah. I, I'm not so good at reading emails, so I missed the detail that I can't connect HDMI equipment to the big screen. And my demo platform doesn't have an external monitor, so yeah, I can't show you anything here either. Yeah, but so I don't have a screen to show it on either. <laughs> so yeah, it's a trim slice, a screenless device. So I'm sorry about that. It, w it wouldn't have been too exciting. It's just like a rotating triangle with the garage shading. So it's uh, it's uh, it rotates qu fa quickly though. <laughs> yeah. So imagine a triangle rotating here. I guess. Yeah. So uh, I'll I'll go a little bit into into the hardware here. Um, so a, a short overview of the of the GPU is uh, it's yeah it's code name AR20 from Nvidia. Um, this is yeah, deeply 
found some traces about that deeply down in some code and stuff like that. Uh, it's an immediate mode renderer. Uh, it consists of at least three components. Uh, the uh, graphics 2D, 3D core, and then there's also some kind of video system. Uh, encoder, decoder, I don't really know the specs of that. Um, yeah, the clients are programmed, the, so the, these c components are programmed through something called Host 1X, which is a DMA engine for uh, writing registers uh, to the GPU, so drives the drives the GPU. Uh, and it has a proprietary OpenGL ES driver, which is useful for reverse engineering. Uh, yeah, so the GR2D, is, it's, a, it's publicly documented. Great. So this means that everything that needs to be doing a DDX driver, for instance, is available. Um, yeah, you need to sign up and agree to, to an end user license agreement, but it's, it's not a very strict one. Uh, they have source code available for uh, for doing some blitz uh, stuff like that. Uh, it can do uh, a lot of different things, really. Blitz fills with you know tiling patterns. Uh, it can do tiling or linear uh, linearly addressed sources uh, or surfaces. Uh, it can do st stretching, rotating, flipping, uh, but only like uh, ninety also, so multiples of ninety degrees rotation. Uh, some kind of blending uh, and uh, coverage sampling anti-aliasing resolve, which is uh, quite interesting, I think. You can do ROP3, yeah, lots more. So it, it can do basically, it's capable of doing all of the all of the 2D operations from OpenGL, so it can do full blending and uh, and uh, uh, both with mask, stencil masking and with uh, scissoring and all of these things. So yeah, it's quite capable. Um, yeah, the GR3D is uh, yeah a bit different. Uh, it's a it's a non-unified shader, so that, that it has a separate vertex and shader uh, and vertex and fragment shader ISA. Um, and yeah, it performs blending in the fragment shader rather than fixed function circuits, which uh, means that we need to recompile the shaders all the time. Uh, it all only has a 16-bit depth buffer, but it seems Tegra 4 added support for 24 bits as well. It has uh, 16 render targets, including depth and stencil, which is quite a lot. Uh, but yeah, it supports occlusion queries, uh, quite a bit of uh, texturing uh, features. Although the uh, they do have some kind of non-power of two textures which is not so nice or rather it only supports uh, well it supports the without without uh, map maps but also with uh, with map maps but then if you run if you try to access outside of the zero one range then you get an undefined result so yeah there's a separate extension for that one um, yeah, the standard der derivatives, and uh, a uh, quite interesting, I think, draw path extension, which is for drawing uh, 2D graphics, uh, Bezier curves, and things like that. I haven't really uh, digged into that, but, uh, but it's uh, it's an interesting feature. So it might be that this is this feature is software only from the from the driver. All right, uh, there's a video codec, but. Yeah, I haven't worked on it. I'm not a video expert, so I'm not going to try that either. If anyone wants to have a look at it, feel free to. All right. So um, the vertex shader uh, instructions, instruction set is basically a subset of the NV30, which is, uh, means that it can do four component vector, uh, vectors for ma normal ALU uh, instructions or single component uh, scalar SFU instructions. And it seems to be able to do those in parallel. Although I don't think I've ever seen the compiler generate that. Uh, there, it has no uh, control flow, so all loops needs to be unrolled. Uh, but it's 
very straightforward to generate code for. It looks basically exactly like G TGSI. So yeah. Uh, and uh, there's already a backend in uh, in uh, Nuvo's Mesa driver, so probably can share some code there. Uh, yeah, the fragment shader ISI, ISA is quite a bit more interesting slash crazy. Uh, so all the registers are either w representing one 20 bit floating point value or two 10 bit fixed uh, point values. That's uh, 2.8 fixed, uh, fixed point signed. Um, there are at least three separate instruction streams. So there's the the the, pro the shader programs are not one stream of instructions. There, there's three different at least. I suspect there's five, but uh, I haven't really figured out all the details. Uh, streams and uh, they there are some additional cons control streams that kind of define how they get executed or scheduled uh, with each other. So there's the uh, yeah the ALU stream the uh, arithmetic logic unit, and there's the multifunction unit which does both varying interpolation and complex function evaluation. So uh, it does uh, typically you know interpolate varyings over the triangle, or and or uh, do sine cosine these kinds of things, um, and it seems that those two are not executed in the same clock which so the instruction word has room for encoding both kinds of instructions in the same kind of word and yeah it seems they are executing it at two different clocks um, there's a texturing unit and then there seems to be some kind of export unit for writing the out the uh, the color to the color buffer and there's some no, once uh, once I start doing shader that spill registers and stuff like that, then even more stuff starts to show up. But I haven't really uh, understood that part yet. And again, there's no control flow whatsoever. So all loops unro unrolled, yeah. all conditionals get become uh, either conditional selector or predicates. Yeah. So the uh, ALU um, unit, it's Pretty well understood. Uh, there's only like uh, a few bits that uh, aren't. There are so only a few bits that I've s I see pop up that I don't n yet feel I have a good understanding of what it means. Uh, the instructions come in packets of uh, four 64-bit uh, words, uh, which either are four scalar operations uh, or Three scalar op operations and uh, up to t up to four embedded constants. So that's either you know uh, yeah, either two twenty bits floats or uh, or yeah four six, uh, ten bit fixed point values. And yeah, the rest of it is basically glorified MAD and can do uh, it has yeah, one destination, three source of brands. This is so. This is um, an example for for the. This is the mad instruction. It has some bits to choose uh, some of the different modes where it squares the C component before doing it, or it changes the order of uh, of adding, so it can multiply before it adds, and these kinds of things, um, or add before it multiplies. Uh, and it also has a bit that seems to seems to mean that it accumulates the result. So uh, the Destination register just kind of adds to it, uh, yeah. and when it does that, it uses some kind of special accumulation register. It seems, and it also has min, max, and conditional select. And I think so. My understanding so far is that when you do, if you change the mad to min, you still get the the C stuff. So it still tries to add C. So it's uh, quite. Um, You just you just pass zero in for C instead, so it's no problem. Yeah, and all the all the ALU instructions have uh, predicate bits, so 
so there's some condition register that that gets set uh, and uh, it can ex execute conditionally based on that. Yeah, the results can saturate, the uh, source uh, operands can absolute or negate uh, bits for that. Seems I have some more under here, but I can't see it. But yeah. Uh, the multifunction unit is probably based on this paper uh, called a high performance area efficient multifunction equilibrium, which is an NVIDIA research paper. And it proposes the idea of uh, merging the varying and the, and the complex function evaluator to one unit. So the complex function evaluator part is pretty much understood. It's very simple. It just takes a register and uh, in, in and it writes the destination of the result to the same register as the source. And it does these operations. Um, in typical NVIDIA style, there's a uh, two-step uh, trig and uh, also the, uh, the exponential function. So I haven't uh, studied what the I intermediate result is, but it doesn't seem to doesn't seem to require any extra extra values or anything like that. So it might be range, reduc range reduction or something like that. Um, yeah, and but the varying right is still a mystery. I, s I see where I see which varying it interpolates in, in each instruction, but I can't figure figure out which register it uh, writes to, and. Uh, I've had uh, had some friends look at this. Uh, Rob Clark also had a look at it, and we still haven't been able to figure it out. It's uh, it's a mystery. So yeah, if, if someone else wants to have a look, then that would be awesome. Yeah, the texturing instruction is um, somewhat un understood. It it seems the encoding is really simple. Uh, it's not entirely clear how it passes the texture coordinates. Uh, that's not so much that uh, it's a mystery, but more that you know I haven't really felt like working too much on that uh, without getting the varings working, because looking up the same, the same uh, texture coordinate for an entire triangle is extremely little uh, interesting. It's, it's, yeah, it's boring. Yeah, but it seems simple. Uh, both lookups of 2D and cube maps uh, compiles down to the exact same binary code. So it seems the uh, the hardware deals with all the all the stuff really. So yeah, uh, there's no need to, yeah, for instance, normalize the cube map inputs as some ISAs require. Yeah. And then there's the export uh, instruction that I'm. I found which which random target if it uh, writes to, but the rest is just looks like garbage to me so far. <laughs> so I'm uh, I'm not really up to speed on that either. Yeah. So as you guys probably understand, there this is rough stuff, and uh, and the help is definitely wanted. Uh, there's some things that needs to be done. Uh, some of this is just implementation work and other is uh, is is uh, reverse engineering so th we have a bunch of live DRM patches that should be upstreamed uh, and uh, yeah finishing out the kind of uh, the details uh, we should probably have an X or DDX driver finished there is a stub driver but it uh, it uh, doesn't do anything uh, with the uh, with except from mode setting I guess so, uh, so it doesn't accelerate any any of the drawing. Uh, yeah, and so that's since the GR twenty is or two D is pretty much documented. It's uh, it should be pretty easy to do also, and uh, we have a working lib DRM interface. So, so it's mostly kind of knowing really how the GDX interface works. I think <laughs> which is the biggest path. I don't know the X. Uh, the DDX stuff at all, so for me it would be quite a bit of reading code to understand what needs to be done. Yeah, and then there's the reverse engineering. The varying rights are, as I said, still a mystery. The shader, fragment shader ex uh, exporting, and then there's register spilling, which happens uh, happens if you do if you use a lot of registers, and they also seem to trigger the same kind of 
code path if you use more than uh, more than 32 uh, uniforms because there's only the normal uniform upload code path. Is, uh, and there's some weird stuff there. I don't really see where the, the extra uniforms get sent to the hardware at all, but it does work. It, is, it does give the right results. So. <laughs> so it's a little bit strange. So maybe maybe there's something wrong with my command stream stuff here. Maybe, uh, yeah. Yeah, and there's the Mesa Gallium driver, and that's <laughs> a huge, uh, huge piece of work. And it's probably going to go on for years. So yeah, that's pretty much my talk. If there's any questions. Ah, there we go. Um, how does uh, the uh, Old NVIDIA stuff with which Nubo drives the desktop stuff, Tegra and Kepler. How do they all relate? <laughs> if you don't mind me it's independent te technology. It's yeah. a different thing. No relation. No relation. Te Tegra is uh, apart from the vertex shader being uh, being NV30 basically. The vertex it shader is based on the OpenGL ISA, so it's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's the, the, even the the bit fields are exactly the same. Oh. Yeah, so it's uh, so it's the, the instruction, and I'm pretty sure they just bolted on that kind of vertex shader strip. Like, and Ket was the desktop technology, not related to Tegra. Yeah, well, the new Tegra, uh, the new <laughs> Tegra, the K1 is just Kepler, but it has nothing to do with the old old, Kep, uh, old Tegra. Yeah, I should probably start using AR AR20 rather than Tegra because yeah. it's uh, Tegra is a product line and not a GPU line. Damn marketing people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll admit I haven't been keeping up to date with uh, uh, what NVIDIA does and does not release. Uh, I think in, on the Nouveau side, they started to slowly share or, or act, you know, start to work with the community. I thought I was under the impression that I was reading that Tegra was um, more open source than any of the other uh, work they have done so far. So the GPU bit is the only thing that is not uh, open sourced in their uh, associates. So uh, the Tegra, Tegra has great support in the in the kernel. The kernel work is uh, they they do excellent work and uh, and uh, support. So it's purely user space anything. that is missing right now. User space is missing, uh, and uh, and I'm I'm talking a bit to some Nvidia people, and uh, and uh, they're I'm trying to get some agreement to get some information out, but I don't think there's any chance that they will open up their drivers or or, or the documentations. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, you said the most enjoyable part of the project for you was the uh, reverse engineering part of working on the uh, chips. Uh, could you just uh, go through your workflow and the tools you use for that part of a project? Sure. Yeah, the, I should have spoken a bit about that. I guess uh, we have a, we have a bunch of uh, tools, uh, not anywhere as sophisticated as the Novo stuff or or anything like that, but. Uh, we do have a uh, repository called Great on GitHub <coughs> under the uh, under the uh, uh, what's it called organization Great Dash Driver uh, that contains uh, some library to hook into OpenGL programs that you can LD preload and it will dump out the command streams that are sent to the <coughs> to the kernel. Um, besides from that, the uh, we have a uh, disassembler for the vertex and fragment shaders. Uh, so that that actually takes GLSL source co source code, compiles it with the on-target compiler, and dumps out uh, the disassembly afterwards. The, the compiler is a bit crazy because it, or not crazy, but untraditional in the way that its output, its binary, is actually a command list that you submit to the 
to the uh, hardware or to the kernel space. So it's not uh, it's not just the instruction streams. That you actually get the whole thing to output. Uh, yeah, there's some other. Uh, I have uh, I have in integrated some stuff with uh, with Envy tools. Uh, I have some documentation for registers there. I'm planning to send that upstreams at some point because I've I've also added some f functionality to Envy tools. For instance, reading. 20 bits floating point. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's. I think that's pretty much it for the tooling. Terry, do you remember anything important? No. Yeah. yeah, so, uh, and the, the workflow is basically writing small OpenGL ES programs and uh, looking at what they're, what they're doing, uh, what the output is, how it changes when I change the uh, sequence of commands. Hi. Um, could you go into a slight bit more details of uh, what exactly the upstream process looks like? Like, for instance, this XRC DDX driver that you have on the to-do list. Is that the XF86 video um, open tagger from Thierry that's been like dormant for over a year? Or yeah. is development happening in other places now? Or uh, yeah, so th th there's nothing has happened on the DDX driver uh, since Ter Terry's work, uh, or since he got hired by NVIDIA, I guess, and stuff like that. There are, there has been a little bit of uh, talk from NVIDIA about uh, po the possibility of open sourcing their existing Tegra driver. So that might happen, but yeah, I wouldn't have my hopes too high for that either. Uh, yeah. And what about libdrm? How does that relate to like the, the GitHub Great project? Yeah, so uh, there's two. There's currently two different d <laughs> libdrms for uh, for Tegra. One that is maintained by someone at Nvidia for for the kernel uh, for t testing the kernel, and then there's another one which is maintained by another guy at <laughs> Nvidia or other Terry. Now I, I think I'm the one doing the most things, uh, most on that now. So there's what the one under the Great project project, which I think is uh, a cleaner uh, approach to it. The, uh, the, uh, and the other one has a high level API that is a little bit too high level, I think, uh, on top of it. So yeah, I have some in there, in the, in the repository, there's some tests for doing some blitz and stuff like that with a, with a 2D unit. So some functions for injecting the right stuff. So I think uh, I think the the DDX stuff for someone who knows the driver should be fairly easy. Or I mean, to the extent where you know writing any software is easy. It's a uh, yeah. It's a uh, it's all known problems really. And. Um or is that that process like waiting on certain design decisions that are in fact um, waiting on the reverse engineering of some of these open issues to complete? Or is that something where people can actually help out? Or where you already have like a time frame of when you're going to be done or when it might be available? Uh, no, no. There's, so there's no kind of project management at all. There's uh, just some repos and some code. And uh, yeah. Uh, so if someone wants to pick something up, then they're free to do that. Uh, I would appreciate if they let me know that they're they're working on it, so I'm not spending time on on something. But apart from that, uh, yeah, I, there's basically me and uh, yeah, there's basically just me doing something right now. Yeah. All right, that seems to be it. Thank you.